One of the biggest modern-day military mysteries is about the true purpose behind the X-37B spacecraft. The whole situation is quite unique, because while the project is classified, the space plane's existence is not denied, and is even publicized in the media by publishing photos and videos of the vehicles that are already available. X-37B launches were even publicly broadcasted. This whole classified project right there out in the open has led many to believe that the goal of the entire project is to confuse Russia and China, so they keep guessing what the X-37 is really all about. X-37B can be categorized as an open secret. One famous example of an open secret is Area 51. For years, its existence was denied while tests on new spy planes were performed. But nobody officially confirmed it until the CIA did it in 2013. Another example is Israel's possession of nuclear arms. While the Israeli government has never officially confirmed that they have nuclear weapons, everyone knows they do. Israel uses this policy of deliberate ambiguity on purpose when it comes to their nuclear weapons. So the X-37 program does the same thing by being ambiguous about its true nature. Before we get into speculations, let's talk about what we do know. X-37B is approximately a 25% scaled version of the space shuttle. It is unmanned. It has a cargo bay, and it can stay in space for more than 270 days. In fact, its longest mission so far has been 779 days in space. Five missions have been successfully completed, with a sixth one currently being underway. X-37B has launched small satellites from its cargo bay. Whatever else it's carrying is classified, but it can bring it back in one piece. It can also travel at 5 miles per second once in space. There are at least three of these space planes built of various models. The smaller X-37A, a bigger X-37B, and the even larger X-37C, which is believed to be currently under construction. The X-37B is also known as an Orbital Test Vehicle, or OTV, and it can be launched either on Atlas V or Falcon 9 rockets. It can land automatically either at Kennedy Space Center, Vandersburg Space Force Base, or Edwards Air Force Base. Those are the facts. Everything else is up for speculation. And a heads up, this is what the rest of this video is all about. Personally, there are two questions I'm curious about. What's the true objective of the X-37 program, and why is it that ground staff wear hazmat suits when they are around the space plane? Let's start with the second question first. Why hazmat suits? To answer that, we need to discuss why back in 2008, the US government shot down its own satellites. The reason for wearing hazmat suits around the X-37 is the same reason an $18 billion satellite was shot down. Shortly after its launch, USA-193, a classified military reconnaissance satellite, lost power and became incommunicable. It immediately became clear that at some point, the satellite would re-enter the atmosphere. But the government didn't consider shooting it down until a year later, when an analysis by NASA alleged a possible danger. A 1,000-pound tank of frozen hydrazine fuel inside the dead satellite was expected to survive the re-entry and pose a serious public health risk. Hydrazine is extremely toxic, and exposure to it can cause vomiting, seizures, coma, and you get the point. Now whether the hydrazine was a cover story for shooting down the USA-193 satellite or not, the fact of the matter remains that hydrazine is extremely harmful to living organisms. Now it's reported that X-37s use hydrazine as fuel. This means that people who handle the fuel or the staff that examine the returning spacecraft, which may have surfaces contaminated by hydrazine, wear a full hazmat suit. So no dark mysteries here. Rocket scientists just don't like to die. But back to the first question. What's the true mission of X-37 space planes? We'll start with a boring official answer. Cue upbeat music. The X-37B is an experimental test vehicle with two primary objectives. 
reusable spacecraft technologies for America's future in space, and operating experiments which can be returned to and examined on Earth. Government has stated that the OTV program focused on risk reduction, experimentation, and operational concept development for reusable space vehicle technologies. The Pentagon has denied that the X-37B's test missions supported the development of space-based weapons. Others have speculated that X-37B was spying on Chinese space station Tiangong-1 and or testing reconnaissance and spy sensors, particularly how they hold up against radiation and other hazards in orbit. Here is the thing. The X-37 program could be just a tip of a space weapons program hidden within the U.S. military top-secret black budget. Alternatively, it could just be smoke and mirrors to confuse the Chinese and Russians. A purposeful misdirection could lead other nations to waste money chasing down dead ends. At this point, we should probably add that both China and Russia are developing their own versions of the X-37 space plane. But if you still think the idea of X-37 as a nuclear weapons delivery system from space seems far-fetched, hang on tight. Because once you hear the list of space vehicle programs that were designed for this very purpose going all the way back to the 1950s, the idea may not seem that unrealistic anymore. Let me introduce this guy, Yan Novikov, who's the head of the Russian defense company Almaz Ante the eighth largest defense contractor in the world, which specializes in air defense systems. Think S-400 surface-to-air missiles and so on. This is the guy who makes them. Bottom line is, this guy has some credibility, definitely way more than I do when it comes to defense. According to Yan Novikov, the Pentagon is developing new space technologies, which would allow the United States to swiftly attack any target on Earth. An X-37 is precisely that technology. As you can see from this slide in his presentation, which I had translated, the biggest benefit of the X-37 program would be the swift reaction time and global reach, since the spacecraft can change its orbit. And this is no secret that X-37 can in fact change orbits, because according to the US Secretary of Air Force, Heather Wilson, when X-37B is at its nearest to Earth, it can use Earth's thin atmosphere to make orbit changes. That would prevent observers from discovering the new orbit for a period of time, and this provides a window for secret activities to take place. Yan Novikov further suggests that X-37 is capable of carrying three to six nuclear warheads. In a presentation discussing the future of warfare, Yan Novikov said that the wars of the future will be fought everywhere, including space. According to him, by 2025, the US is planning to have up to eight X-37 spacecraft, with each carrying up to six nuclear warheads. According to Russians, the big threat to them is that any potential attack from X-37 cannot be detected by Russian ballistic early warning radars. Now before you dismiss all these claims as Russian propaganda and unsubscribe from our channel, consider this. After the collapse of the Soviet Union, a lot of the past military programs were declassified, including Project Spiral. Spiral was to be a space plane which would be launched from underneath another yet-to-be-developed aircraft, similar to the Virgin Galactic VSS Unity, using a rocket stage to get to space. Upon returning to Earth, Spiral would function as a space plane and perform landing on a runway. The project was conceived in the mid-1950s when the Soviet Union was planning for space warfare. In the 1960s, the project commenced with the construction of unmanned prototypes. The Spiral space plane was to be piloted and would have had a cargo bay with a volume of 70 cubic feet. The primary goals of the military versions of the Spiral space planes included photo and radio intelligence gathering, destruction of US aircraft carriers by launching a missile with nuclear warhead, and reconnaissance of space targets like enemy satellites and their destruction. To accomplish these goals, several variants of the Spiral space plane were proposed. 
a reconnaissance version for taking photos of ground targets and a version with disposable radar antenna for tracking Navy fleets. A bomber version equipped with a secondary cargo bay at the expense of having less fuel, which would house a space-to-surface missile with a small nuclear warhead to target carrier strike groups. And finally, a fighter spacecraft that could attack up to two space targets, such as satellites. Project Spiral was a response to American space program X-20 Dinosaur, which was supposed to be a space interceptor, intelligence gatherer, and nuclear bomber platform. The program ran from 1957 to 1963 at an estimated cost of $5.5 billion in 2022 dollars. But the project was eventually cancelled, even before the first prototype was built. Meanwhile, the Soviets were just getting started. Multiple subscale unmanned prototypes of Spiral were built, with most of them crashing. A full-scale test vehicle dubbed MiG-105-11 was also built to perfect the handling and landings for the future space planes. But in the mid-1970s, as the space plane was almost ready for orbital testing, the program was cancelled by the Minister of Defense, Grechko, who called the program a fantasy and said they need to work on the real thing. So Grechko instructed Soviet scientists to focus on Buran, a Soviet response to America's space shuttle program. Whatever was left of Project Spiral became part of the Buran program. A Bore 4 vehicle was built based on the earlier spiral prototypes. The goal of the Bore 4 was to test heat shield tiles and composite carbon materials for the future Buran space shuttle. As part of the Buran program, the Bore 4 unmanned vehicles were also to be weaponized and based inside the Russian space shuttle, with the goal of bombardment of United States within 5 to 7 minutes. Buran flew only once. And then, the Soviet Union collapsed. And that was the end. But before the collapse of the Soviet Union and the end of the Buran program, the United States jumped on the bandwagon of designing a spiral-like spacecraft that was quite similar to Bore 4. The HL-20 personnel launch system was conceptualized by NASA with the goal of achieving low operational costs improved flight safety, and the possibility of landing on conventional runways. Additional potential missions included orbital rescue of astronauts from the space station and satellite repairs. But only a full-scale model was built before the project was cancelled. HL-42 was then proposed as a space shuttle successor, which was basically a scaled-up version of HL-20. But that project was also abandoned. All that said, HL-20's lifting body design still lives on today, as seen in the Dream Chaser spacecraft. In fact, its first space mission, the SNS Demo-1 to the International Space Station, is scheduled for 2022. In the mid-1990s, Boeing Phantoms Works, one of the shops that builds black projects for the Pentagon, built the X-40, X-40 was an 85% scale version of the future X-37 Experimental Space Access Technology Demonstrator. After its first drop test in 1998, the vehicle was transferred to NASA, which modified it and tested it several more times. Roughly around the same time, the Defense Advanced Research Projects Agency, or DARPA, started a separate project, the X-41. All that's known about X-41 is that it's a military space plane capable of transporting 1,000 pounds of payload and releasing that payload into the atmosphere. No photos or specifications have been released to the public since the program is classified. The only other tidbit known about X-41 is that it's now part of DARPA's Falcon project, which is part of the bigger Prompt Global Strike Effort, or PGS. The goal of PGS is to develop a weapon system that can deliver a precision-guided conventional weapon airstrike to anywhere in the world within one hour. Aside from nuclear weapons, the conventional military response time is currently measured in days, if not weeks. PGS aims to address that. 
As part of PGS, the Falcon project currently involves the secret X-41 and the hypersonic technology vehicle, also known as HTV-2. HTV-2 is an experimental hypersonic glide vehicle that can travel at the speeds of up to Mach 20. That's really, really fast. It's equivalent to traveling the distance of 10,500 miles between London and Sydney in 49 minutes. The HTV-2 flew twice, with both flights resulting in a crash. But lots of valuable data was collected and the research is still in progress. It's worth noting that China and Russia have responded with their own versions of the HTV. The arms race is on. The Japanese and Indians are developing their own as well. The Russian Avangard hypersonic glide vehicle is already in service. The vehicle is carried to a suborbital apogee of about 62 miles by a rocket and then the glide vehicle separates from the rocket. Its payload is either nuclear or conventional weapons. There is no public imagery of what the Avenger vehicle actually looks like. Russians only publicized this animation and claimed that the basis for the design was the Soviet spiral space system. But in the West, it's believed that the actual vehicle could either look like a short, wedge-shaped design or alternatively look like a space shuttle with small wings. Avangard can travel at speeds ranging between Mach 20 and Mach 27. It can also change its speed and direction in order to outmaneuver missile defense systems. Russians propagate that it would take at least 50 SM-3 missiles to shoot down an Avangard vehicle. Hypersonic technology is emerging, yet unproven. Who knows the actual capability of the Russian Avangard and the status of the HTV-2 and the X-41. Meanwhile, the X-37 is less ambitious, but could prove to be more destabilizing. The X-37 project began in 1999 and was a 120% scale derivative of the previous Boeing X-40. It was viewed by NASA as a potential lifeboat that could rescue stranded astronauts from the International Space Station. But the Russian Soyuz spacecraft filled that role. The X-37 was originally designed to be carried into orbit inside the space shuttle, just like the Bohr 4 vehicles were designed to be carried inside Buran. But in 2003, the space shuttle Columbia was lost, which forced NASA to drop the expensive winged reentry vehicle program. As a result, the X-37 program was picked up by DARPA in 2004, and that's when the program was classified. If X-37 is mainly a reconnaissance platform, it should potentially be able to spy on other countries or satellites and even have the capability to destroy other satellites. Since the space plane can be launched into any orbit at any inclination, it can provide eyes on to any area in the world. In contrast, satellites have predictable and known trajectories, making them less ideal spying platforms. X-37 can also be spying on other satellites by approaching them closely and taking pictures. The US government has denied that X-37B is deployed for spying. The official narrative is that X-37 is a research platform. The experiments carried by the space plane are often publicized, be it the Hall Effect thruster system, testing the performance of various materials in space, carbon nanotubes, or metamaterial antennas. Some say it's a testbed platform to deploy satellites and repair them in space. The US government has repeatedly denied that the X-37 program is a nuclear weapons platform, or any weapons platform for that matter. That denial doesn't mean anything, as it is the policy of the US government to neither confirm nor deny the presence or absence of nuclear weapons at any general or specific location. And you know what? It doesn't even really matter, because as an alternative to nuclear weapons, X-37 space planes may be housing kinetic weapons. Kinetic weapons were first conceived during the Cold War and were nicknamed Rods from God. The idea was to launch telephone pole-sized kinetic projectiles made from tungsten from Earth orbit to destroy targets on the ground, such as bunkers. The tungsten rod could be as powerful as a small tactical nuclear bomb, 
but without the nuclear fallout. Think of it as an environmentally friendly weapon. Not only are kinetic weapons difficult to detect, as there is no launch warning when compared to traditional ICBMs, they also offer faster reaction times, because from space, any target on Earth could be hit within 12 to 15 minutes. We talked earlier about the Prompt Global Strike or PGS initiative, which aims to bring a precision-guided conventional weapon airstrike anywhere in the world within one hour. X-37 could very well be part of that initiative, but maybe not officially. There's a picture of NASA showcasing its X-planes to the United States Air Force back in 2000. Note the possible applications to serve as part of a reconnaissance program, a space bomber, or even a military satellite delivery system. Now the most significant argument that we found, which suggests that X-37 is not a space weapon platform, is the Outer Space Treaty, which was signed in 1967. The treaty prohibits the placement of weapons of mass destruction in space. But as with many treaties, it's all about the wording. First of all, the treaty doesn't define what a weapon of mass destruction is. And second, the treaty does not prohibit the transit of nuclear weapons in space. This could allow for various interpretations of the treaty, effectively making it more or less useless. Yes, useless. And to prove this point, here are two examples. First is the Russian Kuznetsov aircraft carrier, which is actually classified by Russians as a heavy aircraft cruiser. This was done for a simple reason, to avoid the Montreux Convention, which prohibits the passage of aircraft carriers that are heavier than 15,000 tons through the Turkish Straits. But the convention doesn't say anything about heavy aircraft cruisers, so this Russian aircraft carrier can now have easy access to the Turkish Straits. The second example is the Bucharest Memorandum, which was signed by Russia, United States, and United Kingdom. This memorandum guaranteed that the three countries would protect the territorial integrity of Ukraine in exchange for Ukraine destroying its nuclear weapons. But clearly, neither the United States nor the United Kingdom held their end of the bargain. So yeah, about that space treaty. If you enjoy our content and would like to stay in touch, check out our Patreon page and Discord server. Links in the description.